Good morning and welcome to the channel. This morning we've got a 98 GMC K2500 that needs a new fuel pump. So that's what our project is for the day. I want to thank you again for tuning into the channel. I hope you learned something from it. If you do, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and watch for future videos. In the meantime, let's get started on this. First things first, got to take the bed off. One of the reasons for that is I either have to drop the tank or pull the bed. Right now the tank has at least 30 gallons of fuel in it. So dropping the tank is out. So we're gonna pull the bed. Okay, I believe we have the bed ready to remove. Uh, taking the tailgate off and the bed liner has come out, which is over there. Uh, I'm just gonna show you what I did to actually uh, get the bed ready to be removed. First of all, I disconnected the battery. Uh, looking at the tools I used, I needed a breaker bar and a half inch drive ratchet, an extension with an 18 millimeter socket uh, to remove the eight bolts. There's eight bolts uh, holding the bed on. Number, the second one back from the cab is the most difficult. It's not really that hard, but it's right uh, on top of the uh, leaf spring mount. So you'll need to use a swivel in order to get to that. The gas, the gas cap, uh, there are two Torx bit screws and just a uh, cl uh, trim clip. Uh, flashlight, of course. 10 millimeter socket. This will get the ground screw off from your gas filler tube that uh, connects to the bottom of the bed. You want to get that. I went ahead and pulled the tail lights as well. So there's four screws there. And then you need a trim tool just so that you can disconnect uh, all the little looms that attach the wiring to the bed. And with that said, the bed is ready to come off. Okay, we've gotten the bed out of the way. I would also advise that uh, when you go, before you move the bed, to put either some blankets or cardboard or something between the cab and the bed, just so as you're moving it, it doesn't uh, make contact and damage paint. Okay, now we have full access to the fuel pump. And we're gonna start by cleaning this up just a little bit and disconnect these electrical connectors and uh, take this ring out so that we can pull the unit completely out. Okay, clean the top of the pump off. This is full of dirt from sitting in here for probably the last 24 years. So you clean up the outside really good, blow it off, vacuum, whatever you have to do in order to make sure that it's nice and clean so that as you pull this out, none of the dirt that's on top falls in your gas tank. Here's a little close-up of the ring. And most of the time, in the tanks I've seen, there is a ring that turns and locks it into place, and you have to use a hammer or screwdriver to kind of tap it tighter and tap it looser, and turning it in a, a clockwise or counterclockwise motion. This one has a large snap ring. There's the two holes right there. So I'm gonna use my two hands. It's gonna take two hands to do it with. I'm gonna pull that ring together and pop it out, and then this whole unit should come straight out. The snap ring came out easily. Look like this. I haven't seen one like that before. Maybe you have. Uh, actually, it was easier to deal with. Now the whole pump should come straight out. Okay, we've got the pump freed up. Another tool you're going to need, if you don't already have it, is some uh, fuel and air conditioning line uh, quick disconnects. I bought these uh, at an auto show for like five bucks and it'll help get your fuel lines off uh, both at the tank and at the intake manifold. Well worth the five dollars. Now we can take the pump out, we'll take it over to the workbench and replace that pump. There's a couple of minor differences in the pump, but not enough that it should make any difference. We're just going to transfer this line over, this electrical plug, uh, the filter, slide it back in here, and then we'll put the whole unit back into the truck. Okay, we've got the new filter attached. This is the rubber casing that was uh, inside of here. And it's got little notches or little indentations here that this fits within to, to, uh, to center it or put it in a specific position. I put the filter on, reconnected the electrical connection here in the hose. Now we're ready just to fit it back inside here. Try to guide that filter in first. Okay, we're ready to reinstall the pump into the tank. 
Okay, the two rings, or the two O-rings, I should say, that were included with the pump really aren't, don't appear to be the right size. This one may be, but it's also a different size and diameter than the original. And uh, I'm just going to lubricate that a little bit so that when we put it in, it makes a good seal. I don't want to risk uh, having a leak because of the size of the, the ring is different. Take that out. We'll put it in in a minute. This is the correct orientation. Gotta be sure to put that ring in. Why? I don't want to forget that. Okay, we got the unit back in there. The snap ring goes in much easier because you can start it, start from one side, work it around. You know, just to use a small screwdriver on this last lip here to flip it under. So it's all completely under, it's sealed in tightly. Now we can put our electrical connections back in. And put these lines back on. Those are tight, snug connections. Okay, it's taken care of now. Let's uh, turn the key and see what happens. And it works. Well, it's a warm day working on the truck, but we got it to work. Putting the bed back on is the same as taking it off. Just replace those eight bolts.